In this lecture, I will discuss some basic sketching techniques. I will focus on freehand sketching of lines and arcs. What do I mean when I use the phrase sketch line? What are the different looks a sketch line can have? And how is a good sketch line and arc drawn? Whatever engineering graphics reference textbook you purchased for this class, it will have at least one chapter devoted to sketching as applied to engineering or mechanical design. I encourage you to read and study the material contained in this chapter or chapters. As illustrated here on, and on the next slides, the Giesecke Technical Drawing Textbook has excellent examples and instruction on how to improve your sketching skills. In this example, Giesecke makes two points. First, do not hold the pencil too firmly. And second, to keep your eye on the point where the line will end. To these hints, I would add that you should orient your paper so that you are drawing towards the core of your body. Here is an example of a line drawn with the use of a straight edge. In the sketching done for this class, I want you to use what is labeled as the freehand line. Freehand lines come in various types and styles as illustrated here. You should practice, practice, and practice until you are good at sketching all of these types of sketch lines. Like their analog CAD lines, these lines each convey specific meanings when used appropriately on sketched models and drawings and will be the topic of future lectures. Arcs, circles, and curves in general are likely the most difficult shapes to sketch and have look correctly. This picture shows three methods for drawing a circle. In image A, illustrates the use of a scale, ruler, or a scrap of paper to get a consistent set of radial points to sketch the circle through. In image one and two, shows the use of the little finger and a rigidly held pencil, followed by carefully rotating the paper to produce a good sketch circle or arc. Image three is similar to what I just explained, except two pencils are employed. This approach allows much smaller arcs and circles to be sketched than can be done using the technique illustrated in image one and two. A much more common approach to creating arcs and circles is the use of a bounding box. This image illustrates the three steps. Step one, sketch a square of appropriate size and find the midpoint of each line. Step two, sketch diagonal lines, marking each diagonal approximately two thirds of the distance from the intersection or circle center. Step three, sketch the circle. When drawing an ellipse, parabola, conic, etc., it should be obvious that you would not use a square as the bounding box, but instead an appropriate rectangle, triangle, or rhombo rhomboid. The next few minutes of this lecture will consist of me sketching with one of my sons in his art studio. I hope you enjoy this next segment. Today, I'm sitting here with my son, Robert, and he's going to, uh, he's going to help me with this video where we're going to discuss 
uh, basic sketching techniques. Our focus is really going to be on sketching in a pictorial uh, way. But before doing that, we're going to take a few minutes and just talk about some basic sketching. So Robert, yeah, tell me a little bit about your background. So you, the, the, um, the students don't know your background. I've not explained that. Uh, why don't you tell them a little bit about your experience at Ford and how much sketching you did, and then we'll uh, drop in and actually do some sketching. I worked for Ford for seven years as an exterior designer, and so that means I, I spent most of my day sketching and drawing the exterior of cars. And one of my favorite projects that I worked on was the Mustang. Pretty so, cool. Yeah, it was way fun. Pretty I got cool. paid to draw cars all day long, so I can't complain. In fact, I think I have <laughs> a uh, model of one of the cars that you spent a lot of time with. It was the 2010 Mustang. Yes, yep. So yeah. that's way cool. Yeah, it was a what, lot of fun. What different versions of the Mustang did you actually work on? I worked on the uh, Boss 302 and then also the V6. Oh, I worked on the base model, the V6, also the GT, the GT500, and uh, a few of the other ones that actually didn't make it. Cool. So, so how much uh, sketching did you do uh, a, in a given day? Um, every day it, was, it would fluctuate, but it would probably be around... Um, five to, well, probably four to five hours, and then the rest of the time was either meetings or working out on the clay model, so. Cool. Yeah. And now you have your own company. Yeah, two companies, actually. Two companies. Yeah. You have uh, kind of a, a, a daytime job and then an evening job, <laughs> and your evening job, I understand, is artforkids.hub. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, artforkidshub.com is, um, is a website that I started with my kids, and it's also a YouTube channel. And it's uh, just me teaching my kids how to draw. And so we'll do each video. We'll we'll show. I'll show my kids how to draw something, and then we post it online for other people to watch. So it's really fun. The thing that I really like about it is that I still get to practice my art. So even though I'm teaching my kids, I still get to practice because they don't really get to do that during the day anymore. So that's cool. Yeah. So what I'd like you to do is show us how to do uh, a basic sketch line okay and then maybe a basic circle okay as a sketch all right and then let's uh maybe graduate from that into a uh, maybe an isometric drawing of a cube okay okay i can do that yeah let's do it so talk about how you put lines down on your on your paper okay so uh usually when when i when we're sketching we try to use as few lines as possible so uh, an example of maybe a line that uh, is one that I try to stay away from is one that's got a lot of um, chicken scratch or Starts hairs. and stops. Yes, starts lots, and stops. Lots of starts and stops is not a good line. Yeah, and this line is actually typically where, where, we'll, where you start. So this is where a lot of people will try to, uh, it's where they begin. So they try to sketch a line by by uh, using a lot of little lines, which is okay. Then there's also another line that, so if you're just trying to draw a straight line, uh, when you're first starting out, you may draw like really slow and um, confidence level is kind of low and it will look really wobbly. And, it's and you're kind of holding, you're gripping the pencil yeah, like really, really tight, hard. Yeah, really tight and you're just trying to just nail that line and it's just all over the place and looks on it looks shaky okay so and then another and then the last way or the way that we really try to get to is just a straight a straight line that's just really lightly put in there and uh, you can always darken it up later yeah right? you can usually darken it in later and the other thing I do is um, you try to use the longest possible stroke so it is okay to get a couple you know starts and stops in there similar to this one but you really just try to when you're done with the line it looks like one line so that works for kind of a horizontal line. Yeah. How do you draw a vertical line? A uh, vertical line, I usually will, well, a lot of times if it is a straight line like this um, and it's over a long distance, I'll, t I'll turn my paper and, um, and try to draw, I'll draw the line actually straight towards me. So, um, and that's a way that you can get a little bit more straight, you know, a straighter line or without the start and stops. So if it's a, a vertical line, I'll just turn my paper to make it either um, straight, you know, straight towards me. So I try to pull 
uh, the line towards me. So I'll turn the paper so it's so that line is going to come directly towards me. Great. Show us a circle. A circle. A basic circle. Circles are the hardest thing to draw. You sure you want me to start out with yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> so engineers, we typically put a box around yeah. them. So we start with a box, but maybe artists don't do that. So. Yeah, a lot of times. So what I'll do when I when I was at Ford, I would just kind of I would start moving my arm, and I would move my whole arm. So I'm not uh, planted or anchored here at my hand and doing this kind of a thing. I'll use my whole arm and I'll just try to sketch it in like that. But um, if you want to start with a box, which is a great way to start, I'll start with that, those nice sketch lines and do a box. And then you can also um, divide that box in half if you want to find the center line or the center point. So an engineer would actually do diagonals. Diagonal, okay. Uh, diagonals end up giving you a perfect center. But you were oh, yeah. you were pretty much right on the money. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> I'll start doing them from. The, I'll start doing diagonals now. <laughs> and, and the other thing that an engineer does is he realizes that so this is the radius of the circle. Yeah. But where would the radius fall on the diagonal? Well, it's about one third of the distance from the corner in. Cool. Is where the radius point would be. So if you were to do that, and then this is kind of a cool way to build out your circle. So if you're not feeling as, as confident of just doing right. one, you know, one stroke, you can go around. And I believe that this line should come into that line or this point perpendicular, yeah, right? Correct. Mathematics. That's great. <laughs> so I'm using a lot of kind of sketchy lines, with a lot of the start and stops that we probably don't want, but. I'm not used to drawing this way. Yeah. That's looking there? great. So still when we do those start and stops, the more you can get the start and stops to still look like one line versus a chicken scratch is probably the better. Yep. So this one looks a little flat to me. It needs to bow out a little more. Yep. Nice. Very nice. Does that work? Yeah. And so uh, I would just encourage um, the viewers that they should practice um, doing lots of straight lines, sketch lines, and they should practice doing arcs. If you can get straight lines and arcs down, you can pretty much draw anything that is a mechanical object or mechanical shape. Just using a combination of arcs and lines. Cool. So show us really quickly a cube that is kind of a pictorial cube. Okay. Um, so usually what, how I do those is, uh, and I don't know if this is the right way, but I'll usually start with two, two uh, dots or points that are pretty far apart, and then I'll, I'll find the middle point. So I don't know, I'm guessing middle point. And then I'll put two points above those. And this is going to give me a foreshortened uh, square or a square on its side. Okay. I don't know if that's how you would do it as an engineer, but that's how I do it as, a, that, that's <laughs> as an artist. Good. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, and then from there, I just, um, I'll just i start here with um, that straight line coming down from the corner. And then this dimension will be the same in in the three other edges or corners and so um, you can guess you can guess or you can cheat and actually take an edge of a yeah, paper and mark it and you can actually come in here and just say there's the length and that tells you how far you need to go there and you can use it again over here yeah that one's pretty much there so, and then I would just come in and make those connections down at the bottom for the bottom edge. Great. Now I've got one last tough one on this first little uh, just sketching. Yeah. Put a nice circle on this one and a nice circle on this one and a nice circle on that one just freehand. Just freehand? Just kind of figure out how to pick the center point and just show them circles that are laying in different planes other than 
uh, yeah, plane straight on view, straight yeah. on view. So yeah. at this angle, yeah. there's a major axis and a minor axis to a uh, to a foreshortened circle. Yeah. So this would be the the uh, major axis. Then I would then I, the minor axis is actually the other direction. So in this way, I do actually use the corners. <laughs> I don't know why I used it. didn't use it there, but and then um, I would just actually freehand it in there, and then um, the circle actually needs to touch on the center point of each of the edges, and so um, I can probably just hit it there. I would just probably do this and practice and just lightly go in until it starts looking right, but you want to make sure that each of those arcs touches. At the center point so and then I would just lightly get that in there and then as as it looks um, as I get that line closer and closer to what I want then I would darken it in so so really the technique is start light yeah and then darken yeah too many uh, engineering students uh, go in with a very firm grip <laughs> and a heavy hand and uh, they basically engrave the paper <laughs> Emboss it or emboss yeah, it, engrave, engrave it, it. Emboss the other direction, engrave. Yeah. <laughs> they just carve right into the sheet of paper. So. so and then this one, and a lot of times, I'll, what I'll do when I'm doing these ellipses, and I do like pra um, I do like practicing ellipses. So what you can do too, what uh, another exercise that we would do as a designer is you would have your circle like this. And then you would practice, we would practice different versions of our ellipse. So we would start tipping it a little bit more and then tip it even more. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Nice. So in here, and I like turning, the, I would like turning the paper so that the major axis is um, perpendicular to my arm if that makes sense also. And then the, the minor axis is right in line with my arm. And nice. then the same thing with this one. So if that's the axis. Then... That work? That's great, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, that was a lot of fun. So we're gonna do this again? We are, All right. in just a couple of seconds. <laughs> One of your takeaways from the last segment should have been to be truly good at sketching, one must practice, practice, practice. For those interested in seeing or sharing what my son does almost every day, you can visit his website at artforkidshub.com. Let's review what you should now be able to discuss and answer. How is a typical sketch line drawn? What are the various types of sketch lines used by mechanical, engineers, and designers? What are the different ways to sketch a fairly accurate circle or arc?